Great. Well, welcome again, everybody, to the webinar this evening. My name is Peggy Mazurko. I'm the CAD CAM Product Marketing Manager here at Plan Mecca. Just want to thanks for joining today's webinar with Dr. William Flora, titled CAD CAM Dentistry in the New Digital World. Just want to go through a few housekeeping items before I turn it over to Dr. Flora. Want to let you know that everyone is in listen-only mode. We are gonna have time for questions um, and answer at the end of the webinar. So we'll hold questions throughout that. But that brings up my next top, my next point where you have a and a feature through Zoom at the bottom of your screen. So if you do have any questions throughout the webinar as you think of them, please submit them through the Q&A box that you see here. If you need assistance with sound, screen, can't hear, can't see the screen, anything like that, please send me a message through the chat feature so I can help you out there. There is gonna be one CE provided for this webinar. So at the end of the webinar, I'm gonna provide you a link in the chat feature along with the code that you're gonna use. And it's just a, a few question link that you'll answer and you'll get your CE sent to you in a few days. The link and the code will also be sent in the follow-up email, so not to worry if you don't get it in the chat or finish it, etc. cetera. So um, if you have any questions or need anything, don't hesitate to reach out during the webinar, but without further ado, I wanna go ahead and pass it over to Dr. Flora. He's got a great um, next, I would say, 45 to 50 minutes of content for, for you all this evening. So thank you, Dr. Flora, for giving this presentation and putting everything together, and I'll pass it over to you. All right, thanks, Peggy. Um, hi, I'm Dr. Flora. I practice in Elkhart, Indiana. I've uh, been doing uh, E4D for probably since 2008 and CAD CAM dentistry. I've moved from just the scanning all the way through to 3D printing and everything else. Uh, so we're going to get started. I'm going to try to take you on my journey and hopefully it'll help some of you and we'll go from there. So the objectives today are we're going to try to figure out the experience um integration with between the CAD CAM system, cone beam CTs, 3D printers, all that materials. We'll go through all the different materials, what to use, when to use them, what's positive and negative about them, how to use your lab partners to enhance the system, to make it more efficient and more um, flexible. And then how the CAD CAM system can take you into the dental, uh, future dental, digital dental practice. So this is kind of my experience. So in um, 2004, I started with E4D. It took them about four years to produce the, the first system, which was um, a camera. You took nine shots and we had a 40 mil. So then 2011, I purchased a comb beam CT because I do my own implants. So we started with that. Uh, 13, we upgraded the mill from 40,000 RPM motor to a 50,000 RPM motor. The red laser went away. We got to a more blue laser or red laser then. Um, move forward in 2013, I started testing, beta testing. So I do a lot of beta testing for E4D, whether it be the emeralds, um, plan scan, the mills, uh, I have a Creo printer. We, try, we do different testing and send out resorts and also give them information. So we tried testing the 40S mill, which is the newest large mill. It's 100,000 RPM motors instead of 50,000, so it's twice as fast. Uh, after that, we got the Emerald One originally with the Dash software, which upgraded it, made it faster. We could acquire full arches with that. Then we went to the 30S mill, which you'll see in a little bit, is the exact same as the 40S, but it's half the mill. So instead of cutting the inside and outside at the same time, like a 40S, the 30S cuts one side, turns the block over and cuts the other side. Uh, after that, we went to the next step from the having a cart to a laptop. And then from the laptop, we went to, we have eight treatment rooms in our office. We networked all eight treatment rooms with Romexis. And so the scanners plug in, whether I'm using a plan scan or an Emerald or an MLS, we can plug into any room we go from whether it be hygiene, operatories, where we need to scan for a surgical guide, a stent, uh, ortho, all that is done in whichever operatory we're in. Uh, in 2019, we got the Emerald S scanner and the Slimline tip. The Slimline tip is a great advantage, especially for the 
patient that can't open very wide and you have to get back there to get uh, second molar, it's difficult, but the tip makes a huge advantage. Same year, we also started beta testing the Creo printer, which you'll see in a second. It's an LCD printer and it's much quicker than like the Form 2 and other printers like that. So we upgraded um, this last December to a Promax mid comb beam CT. We had an older CT, it was made by a different company, had a smaller field. Uh, you really need at least the mid field. If you're gonna do implants, you can get the top and the lower arch. And we've upgraded Romex S6 and PlanCAD 6.31. So in our office, this is what our digital lab looks like. So we have a dedicated room just for this. So you can see on the <clears throat> Uh, left side, those are all our 3D printers. So the Creo is the printer that's in the white and black. The Form 2 is in the orange. The first 3D printer I had was an Anthic Cube, which is the black printer. The other two boxes are the Form Wash and the Form Cure. So we can print anything from ortho models at uh, about 12 to 14 on a build plate to surgical guides, um, other models we need we put on the Creo. On the other side, you can see we have all three mills. So the blue mill is my original mill, so it's a 40. It is a 50,000 RPM motor and it was delivered in 2009. The green mill is the 40S, so it's still a dual spindle mill, so it has two motors, one on each side. And the 30S you can see is the exact same size, but if you look at it, it only has the right side, not the left side. We do those and beta test those and we use them continuously. Uh, in my office, uh, so I have eight treatment rooms, I have an associate and those mills get quite a workout. So why, do we, why did we switch to digital over traditional? So in traditional, you know, you have to have the impression and there's always going to be, there's, um, distortion with every step. So in traditional, if you take an impression, there's distortion in the impression. If you pour the impression up, there's distortion in the stone. If you go to the next form, they have to use a die spacer, wax it up, burn it out, cast it. All those things are different distortions. So the more steps you have, the more distortion. Where in a digital world, you scan it, you design it on the scan, you mill it, and you're done. So there's less steps, less distortion. Cost-wise, you can see BPS is about $16 to take an impression, temporary material is $16. Lab fee average is $200. In our world, a block fee is $30. The burrware, when you figure it out, is about five bucks to mill. Lab fee, we don't have any. Um, multiple visits, which are traditional, which includes a temporary. Temporaries come off, patients don't like them. They have to get numb twice when you do it all same day, they get numb once. The other thing is it's a great internal marketing tool because patients love to see you design their crown on the TV. So our, our computers are hooked to our TV so it can show the patient how we designed it, the scans, how it fits, the different colors, how the teeth fit together. And then a lot of them will ask if we can go down and see the, the um, mills. So we'll take them down there, show them how to put it in there. They'll watch it. They're fascinated, they tell their friends, especially they'll go, yeah, I went in, got it done, hour and, hour and 45 minutes to two hours, I was done, went home, fit, perfect, I didn't have anything come off and I didn't have to go back. The other thing with digital is it will make you a better dentist, no matter how well you are today, when you see your preps or whatever you're doing blowing up on a screen after the, the scanner has scanned it, it will make you a better dentist. Next, so the materials really, there's really only a couple uh, categories. So Empress is a um, glass ceramic, so is Emacs. Tetracrat is a resin, Zirconia and Zirconia Aesthetic are both oxide ceramics and gold is a metal. So as you can see the different megapascals, Empress is by far the most aesthetic of the things on the list, but it's only 185 megapascals. Tetracrad, which is a resin, is 274. Emacs is 530 megapascals plus bond. So Emacs, Tetracad, and Empress bond very well to tooth structure, whether it be enamel or dent. 
zirconia aesthetic and zirconia, because they're metal oxide, they do not bond as well. It's more difficult to get them to bond. Emax has been out for 12 years, so it's the one we use the most. Uh, we still do Empress, um, we still do zirconia, and we still do gold on a, a rare occasion. But um, the Empress aesthetic, last time I heard Dr. Christensen talk, they were having, when he was doing testing, it was about a 20% fracture rate. So that worries me a lot, because if you've had to cut off a zirconia or an Emax crown, you know what I mean. It takes some time to cut that off and effort. So when you're doing these preps, <clears throat> whether it's um, an inlay all the way to a crown or a bridge, there's certain rules you have to apply by to deal with the materials and also the mills. So most people are saying if it has a two millimeter wide isthmus on top, you should look at more of a permanent restoration instead of a direct resin. We do that some, more and more, probably three millimeters, and it also depends about the walls, um, the structure that's around it. You also wanna preserve structure. So if you can do an onlay, that's fantastic. But if you do an onlay and it has fractures in the buckle and lingual walls, it's not helping unless you can cover them enough that it won't continue to crack. We also look at thin walls because they may break. Last thing you wanna do is put an inlay or an onlay in the patient comes back in a year and the buccal or lingual is fractured off. We also use mostly super gingival margins. The days of having to sub gingival when you had to hide the metal from the crown are kind of past. The, the materials nowadays, the Emax, the Empress, the Tetracad, they just blend beautifully. You get that chameleon effect, you can't even see the margins, patients love them. Um, the periodontal health obviously is much better if you can keep a super gingival margin than a sub gingival margin. Um, the bond strength is always stronger to enamel. So if you're doing like um, Wally Renee, he does a lot of with what he calls crown lays where it's kind of like an onlay and a crown combined, but he'll prep down the buckle and the lingual about halfway down where the uh, height the contour is because that has the, th the thickest amount of enamel so you get better bond. It's also easy, easier to clean, easier to scan, all that makes life easier. Uh, they're also easier for the patients to keep clean so things tend to last longer. But as you can see you need at least one millimeter of occlusal reduction and about a millimeter to three quarters of a millimeter for buccal and lingual. So the restorations we do, we do not do many inlays in my office. You can do an inlay. We do onlays, we do three quarter crowns or veneers. We do crown lays, which is kind of what that crown is in the picture. You can see how it doesn't come all the way down on the lingual surface. Uh, traditional crowns, crowns on implants, crowns on abutments, and we do bridges. So bridges normally, unless it's in an anterior, would be from zirconia. Um, in the anterior, if you're replacing seven or 10, you can probably get away with the Emax. Now in all the mills, they all use the same tools. So there's three different tools in the mills, and I don't know about the other mills out on the market, but you have a conical, ellipsoidal, and a tapered. So the two top ones, conical, ellipsoidal, they mill the inside of the crown. The tapered mills the outside of the crown. So when you're prepping the crown or whatever you're prepping for, inlay or onlay, you have to remember that the burr can only cut certain things. So you have to prep so the machine can mill it. If you don't, you'll either get over prepping or under prepping when it mills, over milling or under milling. So we'll see that in the next one. So this is a crown we did, <clears throat> my associate did and we snapshotted it. So the, the one on the right is the standard. So you can see how the mill in the occlusal surface, you can see how it's, it's gouging the Emax or dragging a little bit. And that means it's having difficulty milling that if you did it on standard, which would be um, the, the second burr. Now, if you switch to detail, which puts the tinier tapered burr in, you can see the crown on the top on the right, it's smooth all the way around. It's, it just makes it easier. It's more prevalent in anteriors when you get a really sharp point on like seven, eight, nine. You'll see that point and the burr can't get in there. If you don't mill it on detailed or prep it correctly, it'll start to cut more of this two of the um, Emacs or whatever the structure is you're using and it weakens the restoration. 
So we use um, True Abutment is one of our lab partners. And they're located out of California and we use them for our custom made abutments. So in the software, you can see on the right hand or the left hand side, you're gonna order the True Abutment analogs. They're 25 or $30. You have to buy theirs. You can't buy, you know, Noble BioCares or whoever else because they have a specific uh, algorithm that works for that. You're going to scan the pre-op, which is you just take anything off, scan the tissue. You put the scan body in there. You'll scan that. You'll take the scan body out. You'll scan the bite, and you'll scan the opposing. Then you're going to export that, send it to them. Within a week to 10 days, you'll have an abutment back, whether it be titanium, zirconia, gold-plated, whatever you want. It'll fit perking, and they'll send you the crown file. So they will design the crown in California, send you the file. All you do is import it into the software, Romexis, and then you mill the crown here. So the abutment shows up, you've milled the crown, you try them on, they fit perfect, you cement them out of the mouth. If it's a screw retain, you'll be able to come in, clean off the cement, put it in, screw it in, tighten it down, fill the back hole, and you're done. Cost-wise, it's a huge savings. So the components most of the time are $25, custom abutment, is about $200 in-house milling. That's what we're getting about $35 to do ours. Shipping seven to 30 bucks. So for 250 bucks, you can get a custom abutment, screw retained or cementable. You don't have to design the crown. They're gonna design it for you. You can modify it if you'd like and you cement it. And it's gonna take hmm, 10 days to get it back. That's much better than going to a traditional dental laboratory. The other thing we use is we use a lab that's called zirconiamilling.com. I know there's others out there. This is a lab located in Texas. And we do all our zirconia bridges right now through them. So we will scan the bridge in the mouth, design the bridge ourselves, or design the crown so you had a number two or number 15. You don't have enough clearance to do Emacs. It's really short. Then we can do a zirconia crown. We will do that. You send it to them, design it, send it. It will cost you $39 if you want zirconia. If you want zirconia and then you want them to glaze it with Emacs glaze to make it look more aesthetic, it's $49. It's just simple. They'll, you'll send it to them during the day. At night, they mill it. They center it for 11 to 13 hours. So it's fully centered. They'll glaze it with Emacs. It comes back. It looks phenomenal. And you cement it. It'll come back in about the same as uh, True Abutment. About seven to 10 days, it'll show back up. You can do Emacs with them too. So if you have a scanner and you didn't get a mill right away, you can send Emacs to them. You could design the crown, send it to them. They will mill it, glaze it, and send it back. So it's a great advantage, and it's another lab partner you can do more and more with. Also, in our office, we do our own uh, aligners. So uh, we've done let's see clear, clear smiles for a while. The problem was you send it out. It takes a month for them or three weeks to send you back the trays. The patients get frustrated because they came in, they got scanned, they paid their money, and it's still three weeks to a month before you can get it. So we started using these labs. IROC is a a lab out of China that just splits the case for you. Ortho FX is here. Um, we use IROC most of the time. So what we'll do is we'll scan the upper arch, scan the lower arch, scan both bites. We send that um, digitally. And nighttime, they'll split all the teeth for us and send us the file back. We open in their software. You can move every tooth you want, wherever you want it. Add engagers, delete teeth, add teeth, you know, take teeth out, all that you do. Once you're done with that, you move it into the treatment plan. It'll go from A to B. It'll tell you how many steps it is. You can tell it how fast you want to move with the teeth, what speed, um, rotation, all that. And then it gives you the STLs to export. We then export those STLs into our lab. So most of the time we'll put them on the Form 2. Now, if you need one quicker, we can do it on the uh, Creo because the Creo will print and you could print an upper and lower model in probably 20 minutes, uh, where the Form 2 is going to take a little longer. So, 
and it works fantastic. Uh, so to split the teeth, it's $20, which is not bad. Um, you can move them around. The other thing is IROC and OrthoFX, both of them, if you don't want to learn how to move the teeth yourself and add the engagers yourself, they will do it for you. I think IROC charges $200 to do it per case, and they'll split them, move them, send it back, you approve it, they'll send you the STLs, and you can go for yourself. So it's a good option either way. Okay, so the workflow that we use is um, in the next couple slides. The average work time for us is an hour and 45 minutes to two hours. And we'll sit down, my, my staff will seat the patient. So the only things that I do are where it says doctor. So the first thing we'll do is seat the patient, go over the med history, see if anything's wrong, explain what we're doing, click topical, I'll come in, I'll give anesthetic. Once I leave, they're going to scan the uh, pre-op if the tooth is in good condition, scan the opposing arch, and then they'll call me back. As long as the patient's numb, I'll come back in, I'll prep the tooth. Once I'm done prepping, I've checked the clearance. They will sit down, either pour pack cord, they'll scan the prep, they'll scan the bite. Because um, neither one of those are, are a permanent thing, you can go back and edit them. They'll, and then they'll design the restoration. They'll call me back in, I'll come back in, I'll check the margins on the scan, and I'll check the restoration design, and then I'll send it to the mill. The mill time for all these mills is gonna range anywhere from six minutes to about 20. If it's a really big, long crown, it could be 24 or 25 minutes, depending on that, and if you send it detailed. So they'll mill it, my staff will take it out of the mill, they'll bring it back, cut off the sprue, sit down, they'll try it in, adjust it, they'll call me, I'll come in, I'll check the fit, margins, contacts, occlusion, as long as everything's good, I'm done again and out. They'll take it in and stain and glaze it. So we have two Ivoclar ovens in the office um, because we couldn't handle it with one. So we use the uh, paste, Emax glaze. You can use the spray too. The spray tends to get all over everything. It's just as easy to learn how to glaze and it's actually less expensive if you use the uh, paste than the glaze or than the crystallized spray. They'll do that, you can stain and glaze it if you have to uh, customize it, it's easy, simple. Once that's done, my staff will take it out of the oven. They'll, we'll go through the cement process in a minute. They'll pre prepare the restoration for cementation and we'll deliver it. We do close, uh, we do about 700 units a year this way, whether it be veneers, crowns, bridges, uh, inlays, onlays. So that's quite a few units we run through the mills and the ovens. Uh, I haven't had any ovens go down. The mills, as long as you maintain them, they're phenomenal, but essentially they're a car you're playing with, so you have to maintain the machine. Delivery steps. So this is where we do it. So we, we have, um, I work by the keep it simple, the KISS rule. So every, one, whether we're doing Emacs or whether we're doing Zirconia, we use the same steps. So there's no questions of what's going on. So we're gonna aerobrate it with aluminum oxide. We're gonna etch it either with hydrofluoric acid or monobond etch and prime. Uh, you can pick which one you want. Silane is used for Emacs. Uh, Z-bond is used for Zirconia because it's a bonding agent designed for Zirconia. Bonding agent, you can use what you want. We use adhesive universal. Verilink acetic uh, DC resin is what we use, so it's dual cured. Once we cemented it, cleaned it off, we're gonna use a gum stimulator, which is made by Butler. We use that to go around the margins to get all the extra cement off, but not gouge any of the margins if there are. Uh, to get in between an approximal, a quick tip, a little trick is if you tie a piece of floss, double it over, tie it in a knot and pull it through, It'll go below the contact and pull any excess cement out before you cure it. The other trick is we use Acufilm red and black with Vaseline on both sides. The Vaseline will cause the articulating paper to stick to the surface of the crown. Otherwise, if it's a Emax or a Zirconian, it's been glazed. It's so shiny and so smooth, it's hard to see the contact points. The last thing we'll do is we use an all-surface 
access polishing diamond, which is ASAP uh, wheel, and we'll use it on the anywhere that there could be any cement, because if there is some clear cement on it, that will take it off, but it will not touch the finish of the crowns. So it's kind of a quick little tip. Next, we're kind of going to go through the different um, scanners. So scanners wise, you can see now this uh, chart was done in 2018, so it hasn't been updated. But you can see the different costs of the scanners. Now they may have varied a little bit, but that's not the point I'm trying to point here. So the Emerald has a five year warranty. Most of them have five year or three year warranties. But the Emerald, what you pay is one price and that's what you get. If you add the others, you can see the extended warranties, the club fees, they add on. So you wanna ask that question, no matter what you're looking at, what are the extra charges? And the biggest one is the data fees. So Plan Mecca and the Emerald is an open system. So with that being open, you can export whatever you scan in, into an STL. Other corporations you cannot, and they will charge you to convert whatever their format is into an STL so you can send it out. And that can be an expensive and also time consuming thing. So you can send it to them, it can take them a day or two before they send you back the STL. So the other thing is <laughs> on the, I think probably the most mm, positive thing for Plan Mecca and the key to the digital dental practice in the future is the Romexis software. So Romexis 6 is the newest software. And the reason Romexis works so well is because they have all the pieces put into one software. So you can take a scanner and you can scan that, you can convert it. And I, I've learned before Romax is how to use mesh mixer and other things like that, which are free programs, but they're not designed for dentistry. And it takes much longer to manipulate the images to either whether you're getting a model or you want to model with a base and you want it hollow. And it, it takes some time and, and some effort to learn it. So the goal is, is the KISS rule, keep it simple. And we want to get it done quickly because as with you, if you're a dentist, you don't make money playing on the computer. So Romexis has all these th six different things in. So 2D image wise, you're gonna be able to take PAs in there, internal bite wings, internal pictures, camera pictures. When you use the CAGAM system and it has the snap pictures, the snap pictures get put immediately into the 2D images. So if um, you send an insurance claim in, they go, oh, we need a picture for that beforehand. If you did a pre-op scan, you have it because it's taken the picture and shoved it in that file. So that's a fantastic thing. Next thing is a smile design. Now smile design is a software. We use it and you can, anybody can use it. You have to take two pictures. You can take it with a, as simple as an iPhone and put those in there. You can show what patient, what whitening is going to be like. You can change their smiles. It has all the dimensional measurements. So you can make sure the two centrals are the same size, the laterals, the proportion ratios are all there in that software. Then the other nice thing is you can export that, put it in the CAD CAM and overlay it if you're trying to do a smile design on a six, eight, 10 unit case. And I'll show you those in a few minutes. The next thing, the 3D images, this is where the cone beam CT is. It also has a surgical guide fabrication. So I started doing implants in 2001, I think. So I learned before we had cone beam CTs, the old way of freehanding it. And um, since we've got our cone beam CT, we take a cone beam CT on everybody and almost 90% of the time I'm using a surgical guide. The surgical guide makes it faster, more predictable and less chance of any error. So this guide is simple. You take the CT scan, you fabricate the guide, you print it in the Creo, the Form 2, whatever printer you have, it'll print put the sleeve in there and you're ready to go. Uh, right now, I didn't know uh, most people, but the ADA and the CD are recommending that we use oral bite wings or panos for capturing images that decrease the exposure due to COVID. The Plan Mecca mid that I have does oral bite wings and it does them very well. The diagnostics, so we're doing that most of the time nowadays just to help give a reassurance to patients. 
the CAD CAM part of it, that's mostly what we've talked about so far. So you can scan and design crowns. Uh, you can scan open bite. It has it in there so if you need to make splints, you can do that. You can scan for ex or, or ortho export. You can uh, scan for models, you know, go from there. The others are it has a model section. So this is one of the newer ones they've come up with, but we use it uh, when I'm doing a case and say it's a three and a bridge or say it's eight, 10 veneers or crowns. We can export the STL. It takes me about, I don't know, minute and a half to convert the STLs to either a solid model or a hollow model. You send it to the printer, it prints those. We can try on the, the crowns, adjust the interproximal occlusion, scan them and we're good to go. And then lastly, the ortho export, which you can export the scans to whatever ortho place you want it. They're also coming out with a trans illumination tip for the CAD CAM, which would allow you to use the Emerald S scan and be able to see in between the interproximals because there's an LED on the buckle and lingual. So that should be pretty interesting in the future. I'm gonna show you some cases that we've done. So this patient walked into us, uh, came in, he had had resin done on this tooth, I don't know, five, six times, it kept breaking. You see the other tooth has a huge fracture in it. He's a super, uh, principal of a high school. So he came in, we prepped him, he left two hours later with two brand new crowns. Can't see that the, uh, those are pictures that were taken directly after we did the crown, so the tissue looks much better now but not a bad job and he's happy, ecstatic. He could get everything done in two hours. This is another patient. Guy came in, uh, has a goatee and a mustache so that he can kind of hide his smile when he would talk to you. He wouldn't show his teeth because he was ashamed of the coloring and the, and the shade. And you can see he's class three. So we uh, did a little work on the bottom on the canines because they're so pointy. Uh, prepped those six front teeth for him. Uh, we don't do any of these cases, uh, six uh, veneers or crowns, same day. Yeah, I just like to look at them and do a little work uh, to make sure they turn out correctly. So that's just my choice. You can do them that way. I know Wally Renee and those guys do it, and that's fantastic. Um, and even we can print mill them that quick because we have three mills, but I still like to take a little time. So he came in one week and got them the next week. Uh, today, he doesn't wear doesn't have a goatee anymore, and he doesn't cover his mouth to smile. So that's a great thing. Uh, this is a unique case, came to me, uh, was a patient elsewhere, came in that you can see the three in a bridge on the upper right. Uh, it's, what is it, three and four are actually crowns, five is a cantilevered pontic. He had that placed, it's a precision partial. He says, well, they tell me I have decay in between uh, three and four. I said, okay, so we look, yes, sure enough, he has decay between those two teeth. He says, but I don't wanna to have to make a new partial, this partial fits great. Okay, so we scanned preoperative, took the gold bridge off, cleaned up the decay, rescanned, milled this one out of Emax, that's an Emax bridge on the right-hand side, tried it in, fits great. Class fit, rest fits. You can see we closed the space between uh, five and six, just, he used to, I think, have a cantilever off there in the past, he said. Uh, fits perfect. You can see the next one. This is after the bridge has been glazed and cemented. Partial fits, glass fit. He's thrilled. They didn't have to make a no, whole new partial. This is a patient that walked in, <laughs> a patient of ours for a while. Uh, came in, says, I hate my lower teeth. I want to do something with them. So he said, not a problem. We can fix those for you. So we did this. Uh, two weeks ago, I think, two weeks ago, prep those, deliver them the next week. That's the day we delivered them. I think they look good. He was so ecstatic. He said, well, I, my birthday's in two weeks. I'd like to get the top ones done. I said, okay. So that's the day we prepped the top ones, which was Monday this week. So you can see he's had the eight and nine are a crown and a veneer. The rest are older teeth, you know, just traditional teeth. So we brought them in, we prepped those. Here's the preps that was on Monday. Uh, scanned all those, printed the model, milled the crowns, the, the, the uh, 
picture on the right hand side is actually of the temporaries when they left on Monday. He will come back on uh, this next week and we'll deliver those for him. Uh, it's his birthday. I think he turns 77 in a couple weeks. So he's thrilled and that's a great service for him. This right here was done by my associate. So she's been out of dental school for three years. The lady came to us, her daughter was getting married in uh, two weeks and says, I want to have a better smile. I don't like my teeth, they're too bucky and whatever. So we said, okay, no problem. So she cut those off, um, designed them, milled them, cemented them a week later, the lady was thrilled. So. This is a unique case. Um, the patient on the left had tetracycline staining when he was a child and had hypocalcification in eight and nine. Uh, seven, eight, nine, and 10 are felspathic veneers. So they've been on there for 25 years. You can see the recession in the tissue at the top. So he came in, decided he wanted to fix his teeth. So we did 20, there's 20. Uh, veneers, 10 on the top and 10 on the bottom. He's had them about three years. Uh, those are LTE Max with glaze. And those are actually my teeth. So that's my teeth and my smile, my story. So I believe in the system. We milled them, prepped them, milled them here in house and cemented them. So that's me, um, that's my email address. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, please call, uh, email me and I'll be more than happy to get back to you. Uh, that's all I have for you tonight. Awesome, thank you so much, Dr. Flora. Gosh, so great to hear from dentists and how they're using digital in their office from you know just scanning to, to CAD, full CAD CAM systems. And those cases you shared were beautiful, by the way. Um, I'm just going to give a few, like one minute to see if any questions come in. So far, we have not had any. So you might have done just a fabulous job covering everything and how you do it in the office. Um, so we'll wait one, one minute here. Just so you know, um, there is a chat feature at the bottom. If you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to, to send them in. Dr. Flora's email is also on the screen too. I know he'd be happy to, to answer any questions that you have if you want to reach out to him directly. He's a wealth of knowledge and a great resource at Plan Mecca. We're so lucky to have um, him as one of our um, KOLs. All right, I do not see any questions coming through. So I am gonna go ahead and send, um, ooh, here we go, we have one question. Dr. Flora, what do you predict the next in digital? Next in digital? Um... I would think that the, I mean, we're kind of all there just putting it together. I think the next leap is gonna be in the mills, either being able to mill dentures, uh, the scanner, the Emerald S will scan the full palette. So if you have an edentulous patient, you can scan it all. You can 3D print them now and you can also mill them. The problem is the materials are quite not uh, where they need to be. But I would look at that's the next step in dentistry, digital dentistry is you're gonna be able to scan the arch, or the upper arch and lower arch, design the dentures digitally, print the uh, soft tissue and print the teeth and either put them together or mill the soft tissue and mill the teeth and put them together and deliver it. Great, you just answered this, but there was a question about, can you do a full arch scan with the Emerald S? Yes, we do it all day long. So if you're gonna do a, um, whether it be ortho or all those, the cases I just showed you, even mine, was a complete arch scan of both the top and the bottom. And we do two bites. So you have a bite on the one side and bite on the other side. And then it locks it all together so you can do whatever you need. You can also do an open bite, which is if you need to make a stent or, um, you know, you can have an open bite, put a jig in between eight and nine where you want it, and then scan both sides and it'll leave it that way. Then you can design the, uh, TMJ splint or whatever splint you're trying to fabricate. Excellent. All right, a question here. What do you set your margin ramp for your veneer cases? We actually don't, we don't change it anymore. We used to change it um, in some of the other softwares, but it's just, um, 
I haven't even looked lately. It's a uh, standard of whatever the, the um, recommended is in the software. We used to change it when we'd make it, I think to 25 or 30, um, but we don't do that anymore. Perfect. Next question is, how often do you use the slimline tip when you're scanning? Uh, the slimline tip we'll probably use, uh, if we're doing 18, any of the second molars, we use it almost every day. So the tips, and I probably forgot to say that. So the tips in the Emerald cost about $300. And you're going to get about 150 uses on them. So it costs you $2 for each time you use the tip. So we use, we have both, I think we have six or seven of each, the slimline and also of the traditional. And we use those quite often. Uh, the slim line, it does capture less data, so it's a smaller field of view than the traditional one. But when you're that far back, you have to do whatever you can or, or a person that can't open very wide. Uh, the other thing about the Emerald, which I should have mentioned, is the Emerald is one of the few scanners that the cord is detachable. So on most scanners, the problems you have with the scanner is not the scanner, it's the cord or the junction between the cord and the scanner. So Plan Mac and Emerald S and Emerald have figured out that the cord is replaceable. So we have two extra cords at all time. I think they're 40 bucks or 50 bucks for a cord. And we cap it when we start to have issues, we just take the one cord out, put a new cord in, you can go. Where the older, um, like the Plan Scan and most of the other scanners, if you have an issue with the cord, you have to send the thing back for them to take it apart, put a new cord on. So this is, you can change it in your office and go right back to scanning. That's a great point, Dr. Flora. And one of the other things too, I think you have everything networked in your office too, right? So you don't even yeah. have a cart, you know, that you have to drag no. into each operatory or anything right. like that, right? right? All eight, yeah. well, we have, I don't know, probably 20 computers networked, but all eight of the treatment rooms are networked and they have both a uh, USB 3, you know, 3.0 for the scanner. And we also have a uh, fire wire for the plan scan in there too, in each computer. So we just move from room to room and plug it in. That's great. Such a nice, efficient way to, to do that in the office. Yeah. All right, next question. Now we've got lots of questions coming through, Dr. Ford. We thought we were, you were gonna get off easy yeah. this evening. <laughs> All right, have you tried the E, uh, it says, have you tried Emacs Zercad in clinic? I have not. We don't do any um, zirconia yet in the office. Uh, we're getting ready to start. Um, I was a little skeptical. Um, I don't know about the Emacs Zircad as well as I do like the zirconia and the zirconia aesthetic. And when I heard Gordon Christensen speak and I was out at his uh, facility in um, Utah and he said they were running tests on the uh, zirconia aesthetic and at a 20% fracture rate. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to have to replace one of every five crowns I put in there because it fractures. So that didn't give me warm fuzzy. So in the sintering, it's much quicker. Uh, in office, I think it's 30 or 40 minutes to sinter it. And if you send it to one of the labs, you're either um, zirconia.milling.com or whatever, they sinter it in the lab for about 10 hours. So uh, I haven't done the research yet on the difference between 30 minutes and 10 hours, but there's got to be some difference you know, strength wise. So I have not done that yet. You have to have a separate tank too. We have plenty of, we have an extra tank. We just haven't done it yet here. Great, good feedback. All right, question here about um, when Dr. Flora broke down the cost of VPS impressions, $16, I believe, is that the estimated cost for a full mouth crown impression? Yeah, I just got that off the um, a journal. So it's a full mouth impression at $16. So, and the temporary two, and it didn't specify which impression material. It's just an average to get kind of a cost. Um, you could probably get less and you probably get more depending on which material you're using at that time. Perfect. All right. Uh, another question here. What do you recommend for a hands-on education to learn more? Uh, for digital dentistry or the CAD CAM? They didn't specify, but we can start off if you want to talk about Plan Mecca education yeah. and then it. So the Plan Mecca education is 
really a great thing. Um, I've been to it uh, in Texas two or three times. My staff's been to it. You have to spend some time and educate your staff if you want it to be seamless and work easy. My staff loves to do the scanning and they love to design. Um, the only time I ever get to scan is if they are having issues getting something and then I have to do the scanning. Um, but Plan Mecca has done a phenomenal job with the education. You can go to Chicago and see it. They'll explain it, you get to play with it. You can, if there's somebody around you that has the scanner, just call them. They'll be more than happy to show you it. Um, we have people stop in our office and come to see how we do things, and that's fine. Um, there are other places out there, but I don't know of any in the CAD CAM world. Most of the time you want to learn from whoever's making the scanner that you bought. Uh, that's some of the issues with some of the other companies, um, like the Serona or the Seric, they don't really have an education wing at all. You have to learn from other people, and so that's not as good a thing. Uh, Plan Mech has done a great job of figuring out, putting the system together, getting the products, the materials, and the education all in one thing, and that's one of the reasons we went with them. Great. You did a great job explaining. Yeah, one of the things about Plan Mecca is our support and the education. And I mean, we have a great product offering, but we also will back you back you up with that. So like Dr. Flora mentioned in the webinar, you know, you get a five year warranty, but we're also going to train train you so you can come to our Hoffman Estates location was just just outside of Chicago. We'll also do, you know, with the full fit system. Um, We'll do a one day um, in office integration training. We'll do a one year coaching program for, for you as well. And then you get um, a few customized webinars for you and your team. So there's a huge educational component to it because we don't just want this to sit in your office. We want you to use it and be successful, get your whole team on board. You know, this is a, a big investment and we want you to, to be able to um, use it and really capitalize on your investment, you know, get your return back. So. All right, I think those are all the questions. So I'm gonna go ahead right now. Um, I just sent the link for the, um, for the CE credits. So you're gonna see that um, come through the chat. Hopefully you guys all get a link there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and send the AGD code through here. So it's AGD code th or 730. Okay, that you're going to have to put into that um, form that you fill out. And don't worry if you can't do the form right now or click that link and do it right now. We'll send it in the follow up email. It'll go out tomorrow or the day after. So in the next few days, you're going to receive an email with this webinar recording as well as the link to get your CE credits. So um, check that chat that you see right there. It's AGD code 730. We're going to end a little bit early. Just want to thank um, everybody for joining us this evening. We hope to see you on future webinars. Dr. Flora, thank you so much for putting together the content, presenting it to everybody. I think it's um, valuable to see kind of everything that you went through from systems to costs to, you know, how you even do things in your office. You know, it's, it's a great resource. So any final thoughts, comments from you, Dr. Flora? No, I just think you need to jump into the system. The CAD CAM is one of the easiest way to get started in the dentistry, and then you can move forward with the comb beam or the 3D printers and all that other thing. It'll just kind of roll together. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, everybody. Have a wonderful week and um, almost the weekend. So uh, take care and what, we hope to see you on a webinar again soon. Bye, Dr. Flora. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.